Peter from FBAMastery.com here, and in this video, I'm gonna cover the seven least profitable Amazon book categories. These are the worst of the worst. You walk into any book source when you're looking for books to resell on Amazon, these are the ones you want to avoid. Okay, what are we gonna cover in this video? We are gonna cover why this matters, why the books you avoid can be as important as the books you don't avoid. We're gonna cover the seven worst of the worst, I mean the seven worst categories in Amazon, least profitable books, and at the end, I'm gonna give you my number one pick for the absolute worst Amazon book category if you're reselling on Amazon. And the obligatory subscribe and like, and perhaps even more importantly, if you head down to fbamastery.com, link is below this video, you get all this free stuff. These are courses I could actually charge for, but also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, let's get into it. Why is knowing what to avoid so important, and why does it so directly translate into profits? Well, it's important because of a concept called opportunity cost. And the concept is basically this. For every single thing that you spend your time on, you're also sacrificing every single thing on this earth that you could have done with that time. Okay, so this is gonna help your sourcing in two ways. So let's say, number one, you are at a source that is categorized. So it's like a library sale or a bookstore, and you're sourcing inventory to sell on Amazon. This will help you know exactly where to spend your time, what sections to dedicate your time to, and which ones to avoid. And then number two, when you're at a source, which is probably most sources, where the books are not categorized, and it's just a free-for-all, this will help you identify which titles to dedicate your time to, because again, at 99% of sources, it's impossible to scan everything, right? In most instances, when you're out book sourcing, you've got more books than you have time. And that's why what's in this video is so important. If you can avoid the least profitable books to resell, then that allows you to focus on the most profitable and that will always translate into more money. Okay, in no particular order, number one, hardcover fiction. I loathe hardcover fiction. I have a passionate disdain for hardcover fiction. It is everywhere, it saturates every source, and it is almost never worth money. Hardcover fiction is just about the most abundant category out there. It's one of the categories you're gonna see the most. And what happens is, these books come out, they sell a ton of copies immediately, and they're popular for like eight weeks, and then their, their demand and value falls off a cliff usually because a paperback comes out or just because nobody cares anymore. And so the market is saturated and nobody wants these things. Or if they do want them, there's such a glut of used supply that it just forces the prices down even if the sales rank is high. So again, this is just about the most high impact category you can avoid because it's gonna be one of the biggest. So if you walk into a library sale and you go, hey, I'm not gonna focus on hardcover fiction, you might have just eliminated like 30% of the room right off the top, so this will save you a ton of time. Number two, romance novels. I got no love for romance. Good one, Peter Valley. No love for romance, um, and it, these are really easy. Um, just avoid them almost all the time. Um, it's among the least profitable books to resell on Amazon, uh, book categories rather. I, I, I can say I've had a, a small amount of success in some of the like romance novel niches like uh, like urban romance, whatever that means. Um, sometimes when you see, find a romance novel that appeals to a very small niche, um, that could be profitable. Generally, avoid romance. Number three, mass market paperbacks. These are those little romance novel size books, but they cover every single subject imaginable. Um, the little tiny paperbacks, um, almost always avoid. I'll get into some exceptions here in a second, but um, among my least favorite categories. The dimensions to be specific are four and a quarter by 6.87 inches. Those are the exact dimensions of mass market paperbacks. Um, what makes these even more annoying and, and e even like one of the least efficient categories you can possibly focus on is because the barcode on the back usually scans as a UPC code. So you scan it into your scanning app and the UPC code comes up which just tells the scanning app, the scanning app just returns no results. And so you think it's not even in the Amazon catalog when it actually is. Usually the barcode, if it exists at all, is on the inside cover. Most people don't even know that. And that's where you, the barcode you scan to get the ISBN. But it doesn't even matter because they're almost never worth money. There are some, the one thing, one thing I will say about this category is when there is an exception and there is a mass market paperback that is worth money, it can be worth major money. Like some of these are worth serious money. So um, the exceptions, can pay off and potentially offset all the negatives, but really I would say avoid this category. Number four, computer books. I almost didn't put this one in because it's not exactly a huge category you're gonna see a lot, but man, is it almost always a waste of time. Um, these books become obsolete so quickly, as you can imagine. Whether these books are covering the, uh, the, the software side of things or the hardware side of things, everything in technology becomes obsolete very, very quickly. And so these books are hot for a minute and then they become obsolete and nobody wants them. You can pretty safely dismiss almost, not all, but almost any computer book that is more than a couple years old. Um, it will save two, three years old. 
Um, you could pretty much consider it obsolete. No one's going to want it. Um, I think the reason I included this in this list is I am still bitter <laughs> about the time when I was I, I was getting started way back in the day. I was getting started selling Amazon, and I had no idea what I was doing. And my girlfriend and I drove 45 minutes out to this random suburb because we saw an ad on Craigslist where someone was selling a box of computer books for $20. And we're like, computer books, those must be worth money. And we drove all the way out there and they were like, you know, 10 or 15 years old and they're all worthless. And I just remember feeling so defeated. I almost gave up at that point. I was just like, oh, we just spent, you know, 90 minutes round trip for the, anyway, okay, I'm still bitter. Number five, travel books. You can take a vacation from travel books. Good one, Peter Valley. God, I'm just killing it with the jokes. Okay. The reason that these are such a bad, such a bad category is kind of like computer books, where they become obsolete very quickly, but in a slightly different way. Um, the content doesn't exactly become obsolete. A lot of it does, like what restaurants to go to and all that stuff. But they just release a new version of every travel book every single year, at least the big ones. So they'll be like 2022, 2023 edition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And last year's edition, the demand just falls off a cliff. Everybody wants a new edition. So um, these become obsolete extremely quickly. The demand and the value plummets extremely quickly. Just about any travel book that's not from the last couple of years, you can pretty safely avoid it. And that includes Lonely Planet. That includes Moon. That includes Frauders. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Frommers. Um, the DK guides, like all the major travel guides become obsolete very, very quickly. Next up, children's books. Number six. Uh, yeah, just no, 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 no. Now, it goes without saying, there's value inside every single category, right? No category is completely worthless, but children's books are up there in, on my list of like the worst of the worst. And there's really two reasons that make these so difficult. So number one, the big one is the low cover price. You know, most kids' books are selling for have a very low cover price, which of course you can't price higher than Amazon, so then you're forced to price below Amazon, which usually forces these books into unprofitability. A lot of children's books are like, seven bucks or nine bucks, 10 bucks, right? You really can't make money at that price. So um, right off the top, these books are inherently worthless almost all the time for FBA sellers. But number two, I can't stand sourcing these. So like you go to, you go to anywhere, a thrift store, whatever, and there's a million children's books. The spines are like that wide, right? So you, when you're scanning, you can't even really tell what's what. So you pretty much just have to scan everything because you can't even ascertain the potential for value by looking at the spines for these books. So it's just a big mess, totally inefficient, hate them, sorry to use such harsh language, but um, really can't stand children's books. There is some value to be found there, but it's rare. Number seven, avoid just about any author that you've heard of. If you or your parents will say, between the both of you, between the three of you or the two of you or whatever, if you or your parents have heard of an author, you can pretty much safely avoid it if it has not been published in the last year or two. Um, all celebrity authors, almost always a waste of time. What happens is these celebrity authors publish a book, they get a ton of sales, and the market gets completely saturated. This is kind of like hardcover fiction. It gets totally saturated, and then nobody cares. So these are very like here today, gone tomorrow, sort of fad hyphen e, fatty, fad hyphen e <laughs> books that, um, that is just a, a terrible recipe for, for maintaining value on Amazon. That goes for John Grisham, that goes for uh, Dr. Phil, like all, Anthony Robbins, like you saw all these guys that you've heard of and women, um, pretty much if they're celebrities and they put out a book, you can just write them off after a year or two. Okay, drum roll, you guys. What is my least favorite from this list? Which one is the one I have the most passionate disdain for? Can you guess? You could probably hear it in my voice. It is hardcover fiction. Okay, I can't stand hardcover fiction. It's so abundant, it's everywhere, and it's such a tease because you look at it and you're like, this looks like it has value, and it almost never does. So um, that is my least favorite category. What's really significant about what we learned here is the categories that I've covered here, these seven categories might represent, I'm just making up numbers here, but they might represent as much as 40% of the entire used book category. So I just saved you a massive amount of time by telling you what to avoid. Now, of course, I have to say it goes without saying all book categories have value in them somewhere. Okay, so I'm in no way saying these all these categories are 100% worthless. Definitely not true. But you can make your sourcing so much more efficient by knowing what to avoid when you're in situations where you have more books than time. Don't hesitate to reach out, peter at fbamastery.com. Lastly, you guys, you can build an entire business off of what I give away for free. So head to fbamastery.com right now. There's a link below this video. Get all this free stuff. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.